Hi guys, I'm in a conservatory today and I just wanted to show you the desert dome. So you're gonna notice on this window seal around the desert dome, I kind of left space about four or five feet between groups of pots and I thought that that's gonna look pretty. So I'm gonna show you all those groups and which plants we have. Then we have some plants on the ground around the desert dome. And then, of course, there is the inside here. And I'm gonna go from the area to area and show you how they're doing. So here is some of our cacti here. Some that are getting ready to bloom. This is gonna look so pretty. This one is really cute, fuzzy one with the beautiful pink flowers. And then the next group, also getting ready to bloom this cactus, um, parodia something. And this was one of the donations we got. It's so gentle, looks fuzzy, has really pretty orange blooms. We have some aloes also getting ready to bloom. Abisa. Have some aloes. A peanut cactus variety that has already bloomed. Then I think this, I forgot the name of this one. It's quite common in Arizona. The Lapuntia. On the ground here there is some agaves. We have so many of them that we actually have to you know sometimes throw away because they keep growing and we don't have enough space inside of the you know here in the ground to put all of them in. And then here is a golden red tail cactus. I brought this one here because it hasn't been doing good at my home and I decided I'm going to permanently leave it here. What is it, Morris? Morris keeps meowing. And then there is a type of Apuntia here. And some more cacti, aloe. I'm not sure what this one is. Is this kind of type of agave or what it is, or just a different type of plant, not sure. But it's been uh, donated uh, more than a year ago. Then we have a beautiful donation of a uh, um, Corsula vata jade plant. Uh, this was pretty dehydrated when we got it, and I have been intentionally very well soaking whenever I come. So even though it's a smaller pot, it has been doing pretty good. Maybe eventually uh, I should change the pot in this one. And here is another grouping of cacti. Mammillaria reteriana. Really interesting looking. This one here, Gymno, Gymno Calisium, is also preparing to bloom as you can see. This one has like a beautiful like uh, rings of pink blooms and I think it's actually preparing to bloom as well. I don't know if you can see pink. Um, Mammillaria plumosa. I don't know how this one is doing. It doesn't look its best. There's some babies on the side here. Then we have a few uh, mimicry plants. This one we have for two years. Um, it kept, you know, growing some more leaves and it's growing another set now while it's using this one. We, uh, Emily has watered this one all through the winter, unlike the instructions, and it actually didn't become mushy ever. So I don't know <laughs> what to say. And we don't have any special soil. It's not in pumice. It's just in a whatever soil we had donated mixed with uh, perlite. And then we have one lit up here. And then we have... What is it, Morris? Then we have one big 
cactus here that probably would benefit growing in the ground soon. Um, some of Pumtier cuttings that rooted a while ago. This, these, this one doesn't look very good, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with that one. This is a Rebutia that has bloomed quite a bit, as you can see. Orange, beautiful flowers. Aloes, variegated ones. This group here, I have a mouse tail cactus that I brought here. Then I don't know what this is. A little bee uh, something. Um, I have it for a while. This one is really cute. It has a lot of babies. Then we have a few other cacti in this group. They're also preparing to bloom. This one we're rooting. If you watched some previous videos, we got this donated, then we cut it and propagating these. Then here is some more. Here, this one had a really interesting, kind of like pink variegated white leaves, uh, blooms. It was so pretty when it was blooming and it's preparing to have some more blooms. This is a golden barrel cactus that I purchased in Lowe's and donated a while ago. Then in this section we have a donation of, I forgot, is it Pulaskia cactus? I also donated that one. And then this one here, Tignato cactus, another one, it had seeds little seeds all over from the blooms. Tephro cactus. So this area is not very well organized. As you can see, all pots are one by each other. And it's because I brought a lot of pots from home um, while I'm gone, because I'm gonna be gone for a few weeks so that Amanda can help take care of them. This one, um, as you can see, it's a little bit dry. Then this one, this peanut cactus, beautiful kind of dark reddish blooms a rainbow echinobia cactus and this is my lipstick that I uh, chopped off about I don't know a week and a half two weeks ago it doesn't have any pups growing yet but it's healthy so I'm hoping it's gonna start uh, growing here this is one of my sedums that I brought here. This is actually my Fred Ives from last year that I propagated a lot. Has like a little, I think, crested form here that was growing. But um, I'm gonna probably permanently leave it here and most likely make some kind of arrangement or an area here in the inside of the desert dome. And there is... Uh, this cactus that I also brought here um, permanently to stay because I think it's going to do better than in my care. Uh, some more tougher cactus. There's the like webs. <laughs> um, this is another cactus that I donated in Ibiza. And this Pulaski as well. Now we come to some of my propagations. This is the one that I chopped a few weeks ago. I can't remember if this is uh, Purple Delight or one of the Craptopetalums that I propagated and it just started growing babies. This one didn't do anything, so we'll see what happens. As you can see, neither one had leaves left, but this one started growing right away. Some more dry propagations. This is also a propagation. I beheaded this um, Echeveria, and as you can see, it's now growing pups on the stems. This is um, Graptoveria lilac spoon Topsy Debbie, and it's growing a lot of pups. Then there is some of my Echeverias. Preventatively, I had to spray them with a neem oil mixture because some fungus showed up on my collection. I just didn't want to risk losing them. So they have these spots from the neem oil, but I believe they're going to outgrow and be all right. This one hasn't been growing since the beheading much, or this one. This is my Pearl One Nuremberg, but it's just been a week since I cut this one. 
Oh, this one I'm so happy about. We got this donated almost two years ago and it wasn't really growing much. And look at all these babies, the new growth. So I think it's finally really happy here. It looks really nice. This is aloe that I brought here and I beheaded it. And this is the new growth. This is my lilac spoon. This is, guys, my propagation. This is, if you watch my video where I bought that beautiful Pearl One Nuremberg at the end of the season from Gas Farms, and I beheaded it twice. So this is a leftover stem from the second beheading, and it grew one, two, three, four, five rosettes. And in the last two months, they grew so fast. They look so beautiful. So I think eventually this spot I would like to take home and put on my porch when when it gets warmer outside and enjoy it for a little while. I have another of my echeverias stuck in here because I didn't really care being under lights. This is Havortia here in a conservatory that was really not, it hasn't done very well during the winter time. So it's kind of recovering, growing a lot of pups. Here is my Black Knight. My Vera Higgins that spent winter here. My Echeveria Decora that was almost dead in terrible shape. And I brought it here a few months ago. And as you can see, guys, it's really recovering well. So it's looking pretty good. Only one stem didn't make it, but I have like four heads. So I'm going to still leave them here. These are some of my... Uh, Echeverias. This one was quite small under lights. I brought it here and it started opening up. So it looks really well. Um, these are also my Echeverias. And you remember my close plant. I might permanently leave it here and just take the cuttings if I need to. Probably needs a bigger pot, so I'll have to do that sometimes. This is the sedum that we worked on propagating. Then there is some more of my Achevarius. This is a rainbow. This one is not doing the best, the one that I propagated. I also sprayed it with neem oil and I don't think it's doing the best. Hmm. And this is my uh, Fred Ives. Look at how well it is doing. I have a lot of Fred Ives home in here. This is arrangement that I made at home, similar to the arrangements that I made here. Then my Vera Higgins. Oh, look at this. This is Red Sky that I chopped off in my video where I was propagating plants. And look, there is rosette growing underneath. And then two more rosettes on top. Oh gosh, it's so cute. So adorable. This one is not doing good. This is the head of the Compton Carousel and it just has hard time rooting. I don't know why, but the beheaded stem are, is growing new heads. So that's exciting. Not much growth here yet. Here's some more Pearl One Nuremberg and some infestation here. I think I might just chop it off instead of bringing alcohol. Mealybugs are coming back again. They were gone during the winter time. I think this is pink granite and this is my purple delight. So this uh, pretty climbing aloe we got as a donation a while ago, more than a year ago, I think. And it just kept getting dry and I kept cleaning it. Uh, I think it's really root bound in this pot and uh, I wanted to take some cuttings and fit an arrangement combined with um, flapjack and maybe some other plants if I get an idea. I think they're gonna look pretty together.
We're trying to decide what the other plants we can add to this arrangement. So this was Amanda's suggestion using this beautiful cedar that has such a vibrant color that's gonna kind of go nice with this um, greenish, uh, reddish tones and with flapjack. Uh, as you can see, we propagated this one just a few weeks ago and it's already shooting new growth. Um, here, so I think we can do the same thing with these long branches and maybe use them um, to tuck them in the arrangement. So I'm going to take more cuttings of uh, aloe. This string of uh, pearls, I, it was much smaller when I brought it here uh, and it's on the shelves and I think it really needs some different place. I was thinking maybe to use a little bit of this um, rooted plant uh, that seems to have new leaves, and I just took our alcohol. It's not too bad. Um, so maybe we'll need to spray. So we can have something that's trailing here. Maybe placing it like this. So we can get more growth. I'm sure it's gonna fill out. What do you think? Maybe a little more, yeah. Yeah, I think that looks good for now. We just have to find a nice spot. We still have another pot here, and we're thinking maybe to place this for Sula together with a flapjack and having sort of aloe. So I'll go ahead and probably use all of this. This is all propagation of my Crisula pastries. It has grown so fast here in the conservatory, really wonderfully. So then adding some cuttings of the aloe. What do you guys think? It's still a little bit too empty. I think we still need to add either more aloe or more plants. So we'll just keep adding and show you in a little bit how they look at the end. So this is the first arrangement that I created and it's about a few weeks after. So you can see that it's a little bit still distressed because it's rooting. Uh, but I think that this one is better because it's not as leggy. still dehydrated, so it needs more water. And hopefully this string of pearls will um, grow more. So I put it here on the stump in the middle of the desert dome. I have been trying to add some color to the desert dome by creating those kind of arrangements. I started with this one that I did a few months ago with this sedum and black gem and aloes and hogwartias. They have really beautiful variegation uh, because of the stress. And then this is my uh, string of uh, buttons that I brought here. Wernia. So hopefully all these arrangements will do well. This is uh, one of the first areas I worked on when I started. And it's doing really well. I we haven't really pulled any dead plants from here. We're just kind of trying to keep it hydrated well because they do get really dry when the growth season starts. So you can see aloes have been blooming. This is variegated aloe. And then there is aloe barifolia that's getting ready to bloom. There is gasteria that has bloomed. Some more aloe barifolia clusters. Then there is a beautiful cluster, cactus cluster here, 
Then we have some other cactus varieties. Uh, Opuntia that really is happy here. And then some more Alloburgifolia. Really, I'm really happy with this area. It looks really nice. And these agaves in the back, they used to be like maybe taking over twice as much size and then there was a lot of dead leaves. You don't see brown leaves, they look well. And then we cleaned up this area around it so that these cacti can have a clean look. These are all the donations we got in the last year and a half and we propagated some of them and some of them we planted as they are. Then there is Aquintia, I think it's called Rita, and it bloomed this year. I have never seen it blooming before. I think this is Saguaro cactus, so we have a bunch of them here planted around this stone. Here are our big agaves. They grow so fast, and they're the only ones that survive the freeze. Um, so they're tough, tough plants, because it was minus 20 for a whole night. And this is one variety, and then there is Agave Americana here, and three more in the back. This big cactus, Opuntia here, actually crashed because it was really tall and it couldn't support its height. So we had a lot of uh, cleanup to do and propagate some of the branches. Um, this is a variegated type of opuntia that I found in um, Walmart and it really looks nice here. This area was created by uh, Amanda on my suggestion and she did a great job. Uh, creating this, you know, like height here, adding it a little bit higher than this one. So it looks really pretty and it's next to more saguaro cacti. Here in the middle, we planted this big and pretty agave americana brigada. And then we have these large agaves here in the middle. This Okutia here is now full of new growth. Um, as you can see, all those greener petals have like a little things sticking out from their petals are all new and those are all gonna kind of look like this uh, as they age. Um, so we did a lot of cleanup uh, because there were so many petals and new growth underneath that it looked very messy. So. We saved only good looking cuttings and we're gonna probably sell those um, and then the rest we have to throw away. This is the survivor, <laughs> Giganta Sapelia. All of the Sapelia Giganta that we had that was kind of taking five square meter diameter space was wiped by the minus 20 whole night. There was few cuttings that were left. I don't even know how it survived those temperatures. They didn't grow whole year for 12 months, but I never threw them away. I just kept uh, keeping them here in this plate and watering them. And this year they decided to grow. They woke up and decided to live. And I'm so excited about it because I'm glad that we kept this specimen. It used to bloom for us so much, so, so many beautiful star-shaped yellow blooms. And then we have a section with variegated aloes. I don't know what happened here, but it looks like either these fell off. Sometimes we have kids that just run into here and break some plants and parents don't supervise what they're doing. So that happens too. Could be also Morris who likes to plant this, who likes to climb this Apuntia, so he could have knocked something over. All right, well, the next area here um, is kind of not quite finished, but there is Apuntia, and then there is some of the Pervifolia. You can 
look at some of my old videos when Alyssa and I created, started creating this area. This is my Fred Eyes that I uh, brought here to spend the winter and it did so well. And then there is some of my propagations that I chopped off just about a week ago. <laughs> so while I'm gone, I left them here to propagate and grow. Um, then here is uh, another donation. So this is a little bit different than the Americana that I, century plant that I showed you. Um, and then this is also a donation we got. Really pretty cactus. Has some, uh, it looks like it has some Crisula watch chain growing in there and also a Kalahoi plant, so it probably will need to be cleaned up. I created this area recently with um, some of the Huernias and Stapelius. And then a cactus that I donated to the Desert Dome. These are our Agave uh, Funkianas. Um, they are very pokey and we did pull out a lot of them so that we can actually access and clean this area. As you can see weeds and Kalanhoi plants have been filling out this space so we're going to have to clean it up. There is another beautiful agave, a variegated one here and a pretty cactus and a golden barrel and then this is euphorbia that I planted after it has been donated about a year ago, I think. So this is another area Alyssa and I created a year ago, as well as this one. This one has grown so much, it was quite small when we planted it. Looks so good now, this agave. I think these grew a bit too and the Mexican post cactus behind. And then we have some agave again here. This is great having them here because no matter what the temperatures, they like take it so well when it's really hot or when it's really cold, when they don't have water, if they have a little bit extra water, they're like really tough plants. Uh, this is the Opuntia that I had at home, guys look how big it is so broke my pot i couldn't keep it anymore at home it's huge so i brought it here there is a little visteria section here with another donated cactus that we got and then this is the area that more recently um, amanda created when i had a broken finger she was um, planting these and i was just kind of assisting her here is that new area from a different angle. So I just wanted to quickly show you uh, how we planted one really big cactus here in the middle of the desert dome. So here it is guys. This was probably the heaviest and the largest cactus specimen that uh, I have planted. We had some really big ones, but this one was quite wide and quite heavy and it was three of us that did it with just one towel. And I think it looks really good here in the middle of the desert dome. And I think it's gonna be happy and it's 
preparing to bloom. It's going to be really exciting to see these orange blooms on it. Here's our euphorbia pencil tree. I'm just kind of making circles so you can uh, see how these areas that I have shown you look together. some of the euphorbias here in the other section outside of the desert dome. What's up Mars? And I and this is my euphorbia trigona red ruby. It's quite tall but it has been I think um, deprived from water. I need it more so it doesn't look in its best shape. This is a beautiful Donation of the solar plant. I'm trying to find where I'm gonna get the good lighting to just show you a little bit these plants on the red shawls. These are all chrysulas that I brought here. Pretty much donated. This one I will take home though. This one is the purchase from Estella. This one is finally recovering. This is a type of chrysula. I was hoping it's gonna survive, so I'm glad to see that improvement. Look at my clobatum, it's just so big. This one is doing really well. And then on the other side we have quite a bit of plants too. and Fabortias. I don't know what this is, but it's cool looking. A ghost plant variety. This is a bit different than mine. Some Euphorbias, some Kalahoi plants. I'm a big jade. So I think that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I'll um, see you soon in the next video.